May I now request Honorary Secretary Satya Nisrani to make birthday announcements. Thank you, Philip. Members celebrating the birthdays during the week, 17 mm -hmm. September, Ash Ashwin Didwanya and Cyrus Gazdar on the 18th, mm -hmm. Purshad Gunawala on 20th, Aziz Javeri, and on 21st, we have Suresh mm -hmm. and Shamneva Sumani. Thank you very much, uh, Satyan. I wish you all a very happy birthday and many more years of active Rotary service. Many thanks. Uh, may I now request Rotarian Farad Jamal to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Atul Tasbeka. Uh, I just want to know Atul is logged in. Yeah. Atul, are you there? Are you there? Okay. Yes, yes, he has. Welcome. Yes, he has. welcome, welcome. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Rotarians. I have a great pleasure in introducing our speaker for this afternoon. Um, none other than Atul Kasbaker, who is uh, a graduate from the Brooks Institute of Photography in Santa Barbara, California. He has made the big switch from studying chemical engineering in Mumbai at UDCT to pursue his passion in photography and make a career out of it. And he's done an extremely a phenomenal job with that. Over 30 years of shooting in print photography, the country has shot for virtually every brand advertising as a consequence. He's recognized as a conceptual brain behind Kingfisher Calendar, then perhaps most recognized print communication. It has been a platform for many famous in the film industry who have been launched. At a personal level, Atul has been, has been a brand ambassador for renowned international brands like Nikon India and a friend of the brand Volvo and Karl F. Bucher. On the social responsibility front, Atul has the conceptual brain for project Nani Kali, Proud Fathers for Daughters in association with Anand Mahindra, the KC Mahindra Trust, and the fabulous NGO, Nanikali. Atul is the founder of Bling Entertainment Solutions, premier Indian talent management company. He made a foray into film production with national award-winning film Nirja in 2016. The film opened in, with two tremendous critical acclaim and box office success. His next production, Tumhari Sulu, reached, released worldwide in November 2017. And the movie production company Ellipsis now has a slate of motion pictures on Anvil. The last one they released was Why Cheat India in January 2019. On a personal level, I'm deeply grateful to Atul, who's uh, also a dear friend, finding time, and he's got a very busy schedule these days, as yesterday, and uh, to address us this afternoon. And over to you, Atul. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Farad. It's, it's nice to be here to see so many familiar faces. I've just been scrolling across the screen to see so many of you. Hello, Sanjeev. How are you? I haven't seen you at Bombay Gym for a while. That's on my immediate screen right now. Um, so, um, you know, for me, uh, the fact of the matter was that uh, I was in chemical engineering. There were only three girls there. And, um, and they were all smarter than I was. So um, I figured if I had any chance of getting any lucky, it I couldn't give any cheap lines to any of those three because they'll see right through it. So uh, my my best other option was to take up photography, which I, which I genuinely enjoyed. But but the funny thing about our education system, at least speaking for then, is that I think uh, you know um, you sort of became a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, or a chartered accountant because it was a thing to do as a male of the species, so to speak. Um, if, uh, you know, um, to be in any, anything like an artist of any kind was uh, the seriously the black sheep of the family because my, my dad is the eldest of five brothers and he has a master's in mathematics. So he does Sudoku puzzles all day. Um, you know, um, then uh, like the next one is uh, an architect. Then there's a, a doctor, chemical engineer, and then a chartered accountant. So uh, when I said, you know, I think, I'll try and become a photographer there. Uh, you know, my dad was like, okay, but what are you going to do for a living? And with no disrespect intended at that time, it, you know, the photography sort of uh, thing was seen as the guy who came to functions and said, sir, a little closer and say cheese and so on and so forth. Uh, so it was a bit of a process of, of trying to explain to him that it, you know, it wouldn't be a life wasted, so to speak. And uh, um, uh, part of the process involved me talking to someone like Gautam Rajadeksh, whose work I really admired, and to Prahlad Kakkar, and 
Pralad said a really nice thing to me. He said, you know, 95%. I don't know how Pralad gets these statistics. I think he just made it up, but it made a big difference to me. He said 95% of humanity goes to work and only 5% uh, enjoys what they do. In which case, if you're having fun all day and then someone gives you a check at the end of it, uh, what could be nicer? So I was quite clear which side of the 95 to 5 fence I wanted to be. And he said, ask yourself, what is it that you do without anyone telling you to do? And it was taking photographs. So, you know, um, so this year I have to say is quite momentous for me because it's uh, 30 years actually in the business. I came back from LA in 1990 and uh, thank you. And it, uh, it's it been quite momentous. And uh, given that, um, you know, uh, some Chinese guy ate a bat earlier this year, I was wondering if he'd have any assignments at all because, you know, the world seemed to have come to an end for people like us whose livelihood depends on, um, you know, human contact. And, uh, you know, I can't exactly take a picture uh, like remote control, nor can you make a movie remote controlled. So, um, which was really uh, sort of scary. And then things started opening up and then we started having these shoots. Uh, and I just shot with Vidya Balan and with Sachin Tendulkar, which was great because in my very first year uh, of shooting, I shot with this young boy who had just got into the Indian team and uh, I reminded him and he before I could finish, he filled me and he said it was Bata Power. We shot at the Taj Palace in Delhi and uh, I could barely speak any English and I was really happy that somebody spoke Marathi in, in the nation's capital. So uh, it's, been a, it's been an enduring friendship since. But my point with all this is that, you know, um, in a profession like ours and which is amongst a few times I wish I was a lawyer or something, is, is when I, um, uh, I look historically, and I'm a, I'm a great student of history, just in terms of trying to learn what should be done, or more importantly, what shouldn't be done. I realized that even abroad, there's a certain span of time in which you're red hot. And, uh, um, you know, especially in something like the arts, and it's extremely difficult to stay relevant because um, and that word is probably the most important word in my vocabulary and I uh, if I'm if I'm talking to kids all the time you know uh, which happens in my role as uh, like brand ambassador for uh, you know some camera company or the other like right now it's Nikon um, I tell them that you know for you to be relevant in what it is that you do is really the most important thing which brings me to a line that Mr. Bachchan said um, he said, you know, and I wrote it down and put it in the inside of my cupboard, actually. He said, you know, every morning is a fight. Okay. It matters very little what you did till the night before, because when you wake up, you have to prove yourself all over again. So um, I, I try, for example, like in the movie business right now, I try, for example, that, you know, not to mention the, the movies gone by. It will be a passing reference because... Um, for me, it's more important about what have you done for me lately. If it helps to open the open the door with uh, someone to say that you know our first movie Nija won a national award and smashed every single record there was you know uh, like by and large for a debut production house, uh, it, that's fine. But the the fact of the matter is that it's extremely difficult to tick all the boxes like it it happened uh, you know like with that movie with the others. So. So for me as a photographer, the, the process of uh, reinvention and uh, um, being relevant as a result of reinvention is critically important. There's always, I mean, when I started, I was 25 years old. The art directors were, uh, you know, in the agencies that were commissioning the work were, were all around the same age, up to 10 years older. So you could sort of relate to them. And then, uh, you know, um, as you get older, what happens is that the people who were your contemporaries who handed out the print assignments uh, then became national creative directors and they were looking more at agency policy and they were, you know, um, uh, hunting for new clients and making pitches. And all of a sudden, you know, Prasoon Joshi is the chairman of a company and Sonal Dabral is the chairman of another. And uh, uh, you can't exactly pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, aren't you going to call me for some work because they far past that point. And the art directors now handing out the work are still, you know, somewhere between 28 and 35, 38. And no matter how cool you think you are, at the end of the day, you're going to be a 50 plus uncle 
Okay, so how do you how do you stay relevant in a uh, in a space like this, which is essentially a young man's job? So, I, it was always terrifying for me because uh, um, I would look around and see some really massively famous people, um, you know, who when I started were all of a sudden not being uh, you know relevant anymore. Sorry if that word comes up too often, but I think in anything that you do. Um, and that applies to everybody, you know, I keep asking myself, how relevant am I, you know? Um, and therein lies what it is that you're doing. So for example, there, like there was um, a technical reinvention, which was something called light painting that we brought down the equipment and started it. It was a fad that lasted for two years, but it, it keeps you in the mix. Then there was a record number of editorial magazine covers that uh, happened. Then the movie industry, for example, never used uh, advertising photographers to shoot their posters and covers. So I made a pitch to one of the people called Rahul Nanda. And we started uh, shooting for movie covers. So I shot more than probably 150. And all of a sudden, there was a billboard explosion, which coincidentally happened at the same time. And we, I don't know if anyone remembers, but there was this one point where we had really spectacular looking billboards, because then as a trend, people started using advertising you know, photographers who were using much more technically uh, advanced methods in terms of capturing the images, more in terms of the size of the uh, frame uh, going. Um, then, for example, uh, you know, like something like the Kingfisher calendar, for example, it, it, it was something in my head, a combination of Pirelli and Sports Illustrated. So those are the two legendary calendars out there. Uh, Pirelli is, uh, is shot by different people every year and it's uh, just women and it goes from the desk of the chairman of Pirelli to uh, an August guest list all over the world. Sports Illustrated is just swimsuits and you can acquire it you know, at any bookstore or online or whatever. So we wanted to do a combination. So I made this bit of scrap art and uh, you know, had this idea with a 45 minute pitch for uh, Vijay Malia then. And before I'd finished 10 minutes, he goes, okay, done, we'll do this. Uh, a swimsuit calendar that goes from the desk of the chairman and you can't acquire it. I mean, you can't acquire it. It suddenly becomes something that you, you know, um, must have, as we all know. So um, there was a lot of marketing genius from the UB side of the fence. And uh, um, I'm happy to say that what happened as a result is, is I think in a, in a small way, it contributed to celebrating the Indian woman. And I'll explain to you why. But I think, until that point in time, the girl in the swimsuit was the bad girl in, in Bollywood film. She's the one who enticed that sweet hero and made him smoke, oh my God, and maybe even have a drink and you know, uh, so on. So she was the mall. She, she hung on uh, people like Ajit's uh, arm and uh, her name was likely Mona Darling. You know, oh, that was the vibe anyway, okay? There, you know, so if you, if you saw any alcohol advertising, it inevitably had, um, you know, some kind of lean, mean machine, uh, a sports car or a, or a mean looking bike. And there would be, uh, I remember shooting on the Shilpa Shetty where she's wearing a leather jumpsuit. And, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, um, and there, there, there was something really crass about it for, for lack of a better word. Okay. There was something very cheesecakey, which is a term we use in, uh, in advertising when it's like sort of in your face. So, there was nothing classy about it. So in the first year when I asked people, uh, you know, to be part of the calendar, um, all the famous models at that time, you know, Dipanta Sharma, uh, Madhu, um, Sheetal Malar, all declined. They said, listen, we love you to bits, but we can't do a swimsuit calendar. Sorry. So all the girls who did it, whether it was Yana Gupta or Ujwala uh, Raut, etc., were people who had had some international experience and their foreign agents and so on. And it became a thing where uh, it was um, socially acceptable for them. But from the second year onwards, I kid you not, I have routinely had mums come to me and say, you know, I think my daughter is great looking and she has a fab body. Why don't you shoot her in the calendar? So I think we, we managed to celebrate the fact that an Indian woman can be absolutely gorgeous, super fit uh, and proud of her body. I want to actually just remove one misconception. A, there's fit. And there's fit, uh, you know, there's swimsuit fit, okay? People think that for some reason models are these anorexic, 
uh, people who eat lettuce leaves and uh, uh, don't have milk products and are uh, all gluten and lactose intolerant or, or something like that. Uh, not true. Okay, really, really not true, and certainly not in this country. And uh, more and more, you'll find that they are genuinely super, super, super fit and um, uh, very strong, which is really what you need for something like this. Um, I'm actually going to Kerala later in October to shoot the 19th edition. Um, and this might just be, to my knowledge, the longest single association between any, any photographic professional and a brand um, in the country. So my big hero, and I think it should be everybody's, at least in their set of heroes, okay, is Clint Eastwood. So I'm sure most of you remember Clint Eastwood as the Dirty Harry, you know, gun-toting, Western, uh, uh, bad, I mean, good bad guy in movies like uh, Good, Bad and the Ugly and so on and so forth. Who would have thought the process of reinvention for Clint Eastwood and you know, if you see those movies, sorry, but you know, you never thought that he had that much in him to be such a phenomenal, phenomenal director. So now, he just turned 90, okay, and in, in his 80s, he has directed um, movies like American Sniper, um, then just now Richard Jewell, uh, Unforgiven about 10 years back, um, the, the, the fabulous Sully, which was uh, the, the commander uh, played play by Tom Hanks, which the, the commander who landed uh, the flight on, on the Hudson after, after the bird hit. And, um, you know, um, so his, his, his famous line is, you know, don't let the old man in. Okay, so I turned 55, by the way. Okay, and um, uh, I went to Campion School and we had a pretty illustrious group in our uh, uh, in our batch, which includes uh, people like Rajdeep Sardesai and uh, uh, you know Ashish Basin, who's the president of Densu, uh, like lots of doctors, etc. So we formed a fitness group, which is doing really well right now. <laughs> and the fitness group uh, DP is Clint Eastwood, and it says, "Don't let the old man in." So we we've all set these targets now, okay, just to be relevant physically, and and uh, not embrace this bit about uh, you know. I'm getting old, so you know that's the end of my life. And what the hell? That old man can stand outside, and we're not letting him in. So there's a so from the group of about 75, 80 that we were, there's about 19, 20 in this group, and there have been some remarkable, remarkable changes in some. One of them who's advertised them publicly, um, so it's my very good friend Biren Vaidya, who uh, heads Rose uh, Jewels. Biren, of course, has uh, has splashed his photos everywhere. He's now some 25 kilos lighter and is fitting into his son's pants and shirts. So um, he's, he's let the whole world know how beautiful he's looking and well done, very right there. So, so that is, is uh, uh, where it comes. You know, Farhat asked me to touch on uh, things like finding inspiration. So um, I've actually been a bit of a disciple of uh, the great M.F. Hussain, okay? And uh, so uh, he, you, when he was um, in exile, uh, in in Dubai, uh, the guy who was managing his money is a schoolmate of mine, and uh, uh, you know he. Um, so I spent a lot of time with Hussein Saab, and it's quite remarkable. So he had a Bugatti Veyron, the fastest production car, uh, sports car that there was, which he bought, and then he smashed the sidewall of one house, uh, one of his houses, and and then he has uh, parked the car inside his living room and closed it up. This is the world's fastest production car. He's bought it and it, it's there. So I'm like, that's a Bugatti. You know, she's huh? What's it doing in your living room? <laughs> I mean, what are the odds, right? So, um, so his thing was that all artists, and this is important, all artists need to seek inspiration from everything other than their own art. He's saying, so if there's a great chef, He's creating works of art, whether to appeal to uh, your, your, uh, your eyes or your palate or your nose, be what it may, you know, uh, and you should respect that. If there's somebody making handmade shoes, figure out what he's doing. You may not be able to make them, but, you know, it, he's taking one piece of leather and molding it for your feet. And there's only one stitch line at the back. How amazing is that? You know, incredible. Uh, architecture, you know, uh, people who design great chairs, whatever it is. So 
it actually made a massive difference in my life because you know if i if i travel for example um for the longest time i would not bother about the clubs or anything of the sort at all but if you told me that at, at hampstead high street in london somebody makes uh, really good waffles and pancakes which by the way there is somebody who does that um i'll stand in line and do this and if you tell me that your mother makes a great bharta i'll uh, i'll beg you to send some over and at the same time i'll make a booking at fat duck and spend some obscene amount of money uh, you know uh, because has blumenthal's restaurant is great as well as visit museums and so on so for me the process of assimilation um is is to be a sponge and absorb from everywhere else and then what happens is uh, in the 125th of a second that you know i'm i'm pressing the shutter and stopping life so to speak is a moment that is actually distilled in an artist thanks to uh, a cocktail of experiences that have happened you know uh, over the years so um to me that is is uh, uh, is is something that i find that you know um for anybody in the visual arts is probably the most important thing um no um creative person in my opinion should be discussing their own business it's a very bad idea uh, you should always have someone doing that for you which is uh, uh, what was happening in the us and when i came back i said let me look for an agent and uh, you know for them to manage my work and there was no such thing so it was at the back it was at the back of my head that some day i want to start a talent management company which can handle um, you know creative people and let creative people just create and then you know pitching them getting them uh, a great deal uh, cracking um, their contracts and so on and so forth uh, you know pitching them as far as pr is concerned is is something that the agency will do so um, i started a company called bling which is doing really well we manage a whole bunch of people and uh, uh, from writers to uh, cameramen uh, directors and of course actors and and social media influencers which is the current big thing um one fine day a guy who looks like jesus walked in through our door serious, uh, seriously now and he said he had written mary com uh, his name was sivan quadrus and he had written a seven page uh, story on the story of nirja banot and i was in the us in 86 when the uh, flight was hijacked in karachi and obviously because it was pan american um there was a lot of coverage in america so i was familiar with the story and i read the seven eight pages i don't know what got into us we just said you know let's try and make this film because all along we'd been negotiating with uh, studios for on behalf of our actors not that i knew much about movie production the hardcore bits of it but you know we figured let's just uh, uh, go along and i took it to my uh, old friend ram madwani who is one of the brightest cinema minds there is and the whole world had been chasing him to make a film at some point and he had declined or it never happened or whatever so i said um, ram let's go get a coffee at uh, um, that mall in worli uh, which had almost shut down anyway so we we go to the costas down there i said just read the seven pages i'll sip my coffee and at the end of the seven pages he said uh, uh, we'll do this you know so i said Are you sure I said yeah so we'll have a hundred problems along the way but we'll sort of sort them out um since then that mall pretty much almost shut down but that's not our fault um but i'm very grateful to the costas at that place for getting ram madwani to agree to direct our film but nirja went on to be a box office smash and uh, it won a couple of national awards and a lot of others and uh, it set the ground for uh, us trying to make uh, movies in a sensible budget and uh, uh which are hopefully profitable on the table like before they go in for a theatrical release which means uh the sales of digital satellite music etc have pretty much recovered the, the, the you know the cost going in and whatever you do theatrically is essentially then um gravy uh we made tumari sulu after that with with their balan and then a film called cheat india which unfortunately released two weeks after uri so uri wiped it out wiped out everything in its path uh in the theatrical but it was still profitable because it was pre sold and uh, our studio partners t series you know ended up uh, you know making money of it our next film um is the remake of the german classic run lola run uh, it's called loop lapeta and uh, it stars tapsi pannu in the lead 
we were meant to start uh, in april and by now i would have been discussing the posters with you would you prefer this poster or that poster but uh, unfortunately again some chinese guy ate a bat in wuhan and uh, uh, we are now shooting in november it's partly in goa and partly in january and uh, hopefully we'll see a release sometime after august next year uh, apart from that there's a bunch of other motion pictures uh, you know uh, in the mix which we are working on and hopefully as soon as we can attach talent to them they'll be underway um i believe there'll be some questions i need time for that but just really uh, uh, quick uh, what i wanted to say was that the the best advice that was ever given to me still holds true for me it's uh, uh, if it's not engaging i won't do it i must confess i have the attention span of a grasshopper you know so it needs to be interesting and if it's not interesting i have to amuse myself and i have to make it interesting and uh, and when that happens then you know you're never at work and that's my simple philosophy to life just never go to work <laughs> not a single day of your life so um thank you normally you guys meet at the taj right so um maybe sometime in the future we'll see you there and as the new normal says uh, stay safe if there are any questions i'd be happy to answer them other than uh, uh katrina kapp's phone number <laughs> thank you ato thank you for that that's rather disappointing that we don't have a number uh, no, i have it i'm not giving it to you that's all <laughs> that's the problem we don't have it <laughs> hi ato hello how are you long time like can we get off this uh, is this, i don't know um i'm just seeing myself over here ha okay yeah okay we are right are there any questions that we have i'm sure we have some yeah i have to i just want to say hi to you that's all hi who are you that's kurshed punawala i think are hello what's up kurshed good how are you hanging in there although in our industry that's probably not the right phrase to use yeah not at the moment yeah not at the moment <laughs> Sorry, I have this really morbidly dark sense of humor. You, you should see me at funerals. I'm in top form. So, <laughs> Farli, I'd like to ask a question. Farli, go ahead, Sanjeev. Yeah. So, uh, Atul, you've achieved so much. You know, starting with just photography, and now you're a production out. So, what? What next? What next? Um, I don't know. There's going to be a lot of auto work. Uh, models and actors in this business let's think of something to do with them <laughs> so the way things are going right now in our industry which has become the uh, uh, hammering uh, you, you know the soft target for everyone to slam um so i don't know scary times for us but actually what i want to do is um, uh, like something i started which we put on hold for a bit is something called the corner room project and it's essentially an advisory for gentlemen as far as uh, men's luxury goes but i you know um, inadvertently what seemed to happen is a lot of female friends of mine inevitably call and say listen i want to get a gift for my boyfriend fiance husband ex husband whatever and uh, uh, and they would ask me as to what to get whether it was a, a tie or a watch or uh, uh, you know a, a really nice amplifier and that was happening organically so um, i'm likely to you know delve into that because that should be really fun to do i have a question this is priya shri patodia hi atul how are you i appreciate how are you well thanks okay so i have this question that thank you for validating all the art management companies and dealers like me but i uh, you know with the iphone and the phone culture which is coming how does a person who wants to pursue professional photography stay relevant uh, you know in today's time so um so, so here's the thing uh, on a given day you know um i'm sure doc adi they can take an incredible photo as can farat and as can uh, as can you okay but on no day should i be interested with delivering you know with delivering a baby uh, uh you know what i mean or to run you know the taj mahal hotel so so the point is you know with photography what's happened is with the number of apps and the fact that uh, you have a camera in your pocket with with which once in a while you answer a phone call um you know the the process uh, 
has become very democratized, to, so to speak. So anyone on a given day can take a fantastic image. So my, my advice to people is either you be phenomenally good or you become a DOP. Because I think video is the future. So if anyone wants to be a photographer, I tell them, don't be a photographer. Why don't you become a videographer or a cinematographer? You're basically capturing photos, many photos in a row. So, you know, and you'll always have work. So my son, um, you know, is studying at the New York Film Academy. Um, damn these nepotistic kids. But, uh, you know, so he, want, he, you know, he wants to be a director or uh, um, a DOP. I said, please become a DOP. You can always become a, uh, you know, you can direct later if you want. You know, so. So I would say, uh, uh, you know, to market yourself, it's actually, it's a dogfight out there right now because anyone with a smartphone is technically a photographer. You know, that's the the, the problem. It's very very difficult. I have what a kind of photographer? Hanji, what kind of photographer? Me or any? No, kind? anyone with a mobile phone gets up and takes some picture, unless he has some. Your your. Your soul is behind every picture you take and your movies you take. Somebody for the, uh, this phone said really, but photography in my mind, little to a lower level. I agree, sir. But the point is that, uh, you know, um, uh, for example, in video, you can, uh, uh, I've seen entire short films that have been made, you know, on a smartphone. So the resolution is really pretty much good enough for, you know, an iPad screen or a computer screen, and you're not going to release it theatrically. And, you know, people are consuming their entertainment of uh, screens that are smaller and smaller while they're in motion in a car, in a bus, uh, right. and so on. So the, you know, the benchmarks are not that high. And, and, and let's face it, look around you, just look at Indian architecture, for, for example. I mean, you know, most of the buildings like that we see that have been made post-independence uh, are, are just ridiculously bad. We don't like, for example, I lived in Santa Barbara and sure, that's a rich city, but at a very simple level, all homes had to have white walls. All roofs had to be sloping and red tiled. It didn't matter if it was Michael McDonald's house. It didn't matter if it was Kareem Abdul Jabbar's house. There's a certain housing code. So when you looked at the building, um, you know, uh, if you looked at the hillside, you had a certain harmony to the way it looked. Just drive down our streets and just take a look at how, how grotesquely ugly, you know, things are. And why? You know, you could really... You, there, there is absolutely little sense of collective aesthetics that goes into it. So our benchmarks are really very, very low. And, and right now, I have to tell you, I mean, we did this shoot with Tendulkar for a huge brand. You'll see it releasing now. And it literally became a thing of, um, you know, uh, three estimates. And uh, which is why the Doordarshan material for the longest time was utter garbage because they went with three estimates and whoever was the cheapest Got it. It didn't, it didn't matter what their, you know, expertise was, how good they were telling a story and so on, you know. So, um, and then finally, I think Sachin's manager called and said, hey, look, he wants to shoot with this guy. Can we please stop the stupid discussion? And that's that, you know. So, um, but, but uh, like a lot of it is just really, really low benchmarks, I think. For... Ali, Ali, I have go a ahead. question. Go ahead, Thank Shalini. you. Yeah. Um, you know, in the films that you make, are you. you the creative behind the screenplay and you do you actually go behind the camera? Well, good question. No, I don't. What we do is we identify the story and then uh, we put the whole thing together. So we'll get a director who will work with the story. Then we'll go and attach the talent. Which we, So for example, let me take, um, you know, Tumari Sulu, for example. The story, uh, like the script came from an ad film director called Suresh Triveni. And I can relate to ad film directors because they're from my world. And I think they need to be cushioned into the movie business. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a big bad world out there, you know, with a bunch of sharks. So it's easy if they have a familiar face in between. So Suresh had a great story about this girl, uh, about this lady who, you know, is a housewife in uh, outer suburbia and is otherwise a general loser in life and nothing's really happening for her and so on. And she hasn't even passed her 10th, but she's married, has a kid, but she's very enthusiastic. And she um, takes part in literally everything and suddenly discovers that she has a talent to be a radio jockey. And she gets a midnight um, love dial in show where, you know, love struck puppies are calling up and she's giving advice and it's hilarious. Right. So, um, you know, so that's the uh, thing. So, so we took it to Vidya Balan, who was our first and last choice. So, um, so I, I kept telling Vidya that, listen, um, like Balan, you are the plan B. There is no plan A. <laughs> okay. So, so she bought into it. 
and then it was a question of putting uh, the studio in place you know to get the money so we sold it then to t series and then supervise the shoot from start to finish so in a manner of speaking my job or uh, our job as producers is to play zubin mehta we create the uh, stage and a platform for creative people to come and coexist and deal with each other in a harmonious way hopefully at the end of it you know we create some kind of symphony and not a cacophony that's that's, that's, that's So you're not not using your, your photographic uh, genius on any of your films. I'm sorry, your voice is cracking. Sorry, sorry. Uh, your, your photographic abilities are not being used in any of your films. No, no, no. no. I, 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 uh, the the only way it's being used is the movie posters because I'll obviously shoot them. So the movie posters you've seen for them uh, for my uh, films have been shot by me. Otherwise, I sit there and give my right profile and usually have green tea. ओके Yeah, but I discovered your, for for Haan, ji. No, I see your workouts on. Uh, I think when you uh, post them on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I've just uh, um, you know, growing up, like people tell you that yoga, uh, you know, and you thought it was an uncool thing to do because you know you go to you go to gyms and you lift weights and stuff. So this lockdown, I figured I'll I'll probably end up uh, you know fatter at the end of it. So I was a little terrified. so uh, about this then i just read up a little and for anyone who's interested i downloaded an app on my phone called healthify me like beautify mm-hmm. me healthify me mm-hmm. and uh, then stuck to under 2000 calories a day which was very easy actually i was doing it more between 16 to 70 100 1800 if i had a drink and um, i just uh, and then i was training hard which is normal my my normal this thing i dropped 8 and 1/2 kilos of fat i didn't know i had so i'm almost 6 foot 3 and i was at 92 now i'm at like i was at 83 and a half then i uh, you know i'm at about 84 now which is quite fantastic but it's all yoga i've been doing uh, some intense yoga i can do some cool stuff with my body now i feel like i'm living in a different body so i would strongly recommend it to everybody first of all this app is amazing you just have to enter everything you eat that's all which is a bit scary okay. then you you know then you stop eating all the crap you do <laughs> because <laughs> so yeah hi hi to ha ji this pratap here Hi. So, I, my my early memories of you are when you recruited me as a model in Goa. If you remember, must have been a slow week. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just okay. kidding. Okay. My question is, uh, you know, with this Netflix and Amazon uh, movies being released now on these uh, platforms, you can never tell which movie is actually a hit or which is a flop. Because obviously, there are no ratings or box office. Uh, you know numbers yeah. coming in so how do producers actually how are they going to actually figure this out you know that which actually really ran well which didn't do well what what's your take oh uh, yeah that's actually a damn good question because you know unlike satellite uh, where you know what the trps were there's no monitoring system in place that uh, is allowed access by netflix mx uh, amazon etc etc so you don't know so now you know one can only then surmise how a movie would have done like, like let's say you know gulabo sitabo uh, like which released you don't know how well or not it would have done if it had a theatrical um you know same thing with let's say let's name another big movie um uh, shakuntala devi for example which released so um you know so it's very deceptive but the thing is that a, a lot of people who had their movies ready and didn't go to theatrical and had premieres on uh, ott platforms straight away actually made out like bandits so good for them you know um because they renegotiated their deals and said you know it's coming here first so for example allegedly and obviously since i'm not their accountant nor lawyer i can only tell you uh, what's industry speak is uh, gunjan saxena kargil the kargil girl story was uh, made uh, it was a bit high at about 32 crores and when it couldn't release theatrically they went straight to uh, ott and at 7 million dollars so that's about 50 Yeah. so and you you spent nothing on what's called the pna which is prints and advertising so you know the studio didn't spend any of that so 
your apart from your cost of money you know you made out pretty well so this data actually will be you know held by netflix and amazon and they'll know which ones did well and which ones yes 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 they'll but from an it. roi from an roi perspective a movie called loot case which released i think on hotstar uh the quite a good film actually you should watch it um did uh, uh exceptionally well in terms of eyeballs that's the general you know thing so if it released if it had released theatrically it would have probably been a sleeper hit because the movie was also made cheap yes sir yeah okay. uh my question is on the kingfisher calendar any inside Gee. scoop on the 2021 on 2021 we're going to kerala yeah because uh, we can't go to a quarantine uh, you know risk quarantine in and out of any uh, country in fact coming back in as well so uh, we were actually uh, what what happens nicely is that you know um we end up giving a lot of publicity to the destination and uh, you know um so we i literally shot all over the world and the, and the and the clients were great you know i we sort of spin a globe every year and just throw a dart and oh look it's the maldives you know um let's go you know okay so um so so they they've actually uh, people at united breweries have been really fantastic because it's been a great property for them i mean look at the names that have come out of the calendar right uh, yana gupta um uh, ujwala raut deepika padukone nargis fakri uh saimi khair nora fate uh, angela johnson uh isha gupta the list is long and distinguished so you know so so at one point there was the beauty pageants which sort of uh, put a spotlight on you and ashwarya rai came out of a you know of a miss india contest then uh, at some point people realized that that's basically you know it's a commercially driven exercise um um beauty pageants that is and as long as you desire world peace and mother teresa is your favorite person in the whole world uh you know all will be well <laughs> so apart from that blatant hypocrisy i think people sort of wised up on that one so we want nobody to bring world peace we just want it to look smashing okay <laughs> i mean if 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 you get a peaceful moment if you get a peaceful moment looking at the picture i'm happy enough okay do you need any assistance uh in kerala okay again the list is very long my uh, <laughs> you know my school friend who was a mafatlal offered me 51 lakhs to be the official oiler so if you can top that if you can top that i'll uh, i'll put it uh, in consideration ashish you had a question hi atul this is ashish contractor i yeah, ashish. i love emphasis on on being relevant i thought that's a great point my question to you is after all of the success what kind of motivates you to keep being relevant i think the fear of failure yeah or the fear of not being relevant that's really scary you know because um, i mean they would like like um, and and what happens is there's just so much information coming at you right now okay so let me put it this way let's take a movie we all probably saw i suppose most people at least heard of a soap pa right pa with vidya balan mm-hmm. amit ji and abhishek bachchan where like mr bachchan is playing uh, the this man with a congenitive disorder and he, he gets old very fast so um uh, you know and he's the son of abhishek and and vidya and so right so pa was what some 7 8 years back it feels like it was in jurassic park you know because what's happened is the amount of information coming at you whether on youtube or whether on your phone or whether on all the platforms put together is probably 10 times 30 times more i don't know what the math is than earlier came at you say 10 years ago you know when you just went to a movie theater and you saw a film it was that simple now you're spoiled for choice uh, you know so sacred games for example which had an excellent first season the second season was a disaster i met a comedian friend of mine rohan joshi and i said how I think we've lost Atul there. Yeah, I think we lost him. We just wait for him to log in. Parat, will you give him a call? That is no.
He's here. He's not gone. I think something wrong with it's his... frozen. I think it's yeah. uh, it's a connectivity issue. Yeah, yeah, looks like. Fali, very good meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to Farah. Very enjoyable. Very <laughs> I wonder if he takes any calendars, even for men, why only women are showed in this Kingfisher calendar. Maybe I you can ask him that the, question. Yes, you can I ask him that. Is I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him. Probably I think you may have to take it off. Yeah, I sorry, think yeah. this is the yeah, third Atul time he's spoken to Rotary. Yeah. Atul is but back. He's that, was, that was because it was driven by Vijay Mali, so it had to be Priyashri, it had to be... Yeah, so Atul, yeah. my question was that only why are you making calendars with women on it? Why not men? They are beautiful okay. too. I, I agree with you, but you know, the thought of hanging on a beach with a bunch of boys from Jatland, okay, who will start every sentence with Oye, uh, <laughs> uh, is, is not my <laughs> cup of tea, you know. It's very depressing, and then they'll be worried about their chest hair being removed or not. That's oh. just downright. <laughs> but if I mean, you're that's but, too much information, at all. Yeah, I, I, know, I know. That's the thing. So you know, so I I actually proposed it to uh, <laughs> <a female laughs> <doctor laughs> a friend of mine. She <laughs> <was> <laughs> <a> female, <laughs> I I told Sheena Sippy, why don't you do this? Where you know, there's only a female crew shooting this. I think it'd be fantastic. So, good idea. Yeah. Fantastic. But, Thank you. Ashish, you want to finish your question? No, no, I, I got the answer. Thanks. He's well done. Answer. Do we have any other questions? Not at the moment. Uh, Thank yeah, you. I have a question. I have a question. Go ahead, people. Atul, how important has Vandana been in your success? Are she is the most secure human being in the world. That's the most fantastic thing. So, <laughs> you know, so it's nice. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so she sort of uh, uh, like just lets me be, and uh, and and I, I and I know uh, fully well just how lucky I am, and that's not just one of those things to say. It's it's the gospel. Yeah, that's because my my sister is probably bang your head if you don't say that, right, <laughs> Angita? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, one one question. Can I yeah, ask one? Go ahead. Uh, Atul, I've been, mean, uh, you know, so I've been mean, part of the Siddham College and my kids in Campion and, you know, you just mentioned Campion, but do you think there's a scope for a photography institute in India or Mumbai to build up? There's quite uh, a few already. Hours? There's quite a few. There's one called the Shari Academy in Bombay. There's uh, something called the Light and Life uh, Institute in uh, Uti, I believe, um, which is run by a former colleague of mine called Iqbal Mohammed, a very good photographer. Uh, then I think Symbiosis has a good course. Then um, former photographer Shantanu Shevre, I think, has one in Goa. Um, yeah, so there's like four or five that I know of. So there's already a bunch of them. So, Amazing. You know, yeah. Great. So, um, so, you know, I, I was hoping my son would go to one of the one of these ones that will be cheaper than to, <laughs> okay. than to pay. Than but to the last thing, I, amazing. So I get a calendars every year and I think one will be coming on right now. Lucky you. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. <laughs> Thank you, Atul. Thank you. My pleasure. May I, may I request uh, Satya to please uh, give the official vote of thanks? Yes, with pleasure. Thank you, Atul, so much for spending the afternoon with us. It was truly relevant and engaging. And the silver lining is we have uh, the Kingfisher calendar to look forward to after these morbid times. Uh, as a token of appreciation for this afternoon that you have spent with us, we will be lighting up a rural household using solar power. We oh, will that's be sending, awesome. Thank you. That's great. We will be sending you the certificate in due course. Uh, members, please note that uh, the next meeting is on the 22nd, where we'll have uh, a district Rotarian Arun Bhargav talking to us about what is new in Rotary. The statistics for today, we had a maximum participation of 107 and uh, the meeting is now closed. Thank you. I Atul just want to add one quick thing. Atul, 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 Atul. Add a quick thing. No, no, just in terms of, um, you know, friends of mine have been asking me to uh, do do a quick class on 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 lighting for, on lighting themselves for Zoom meetings <laughs> <laughs> because because we're going to be seeing each other so much. So I just want to say uh, the following people are nicely lit on camera right now. Um, Mr. Framrose Mehta, Dr. Chaugule. 
टिंग 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 रुस्तम जिनवाला मिस बाल्डी वाला प्रियसी पॉल जॉर्ज इज जस्ट पुट अ स्टिल ओवर देयर एंड डिसअपीयर्ड The trick is that we just have shining personalities. Right yeah. there, there you go. It's no, no. So, 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 so maybe this is a small, small workshop for you guys who are doing at some point in time. Atul, how are you? Atul, how are you? Your, your camera, your camera, your camera cannot be lower than your chin for a start. Oh, okay. Now I'm coming forward. Adi, Adi, clean your lens. It's dirty. There, Atul, there what would some, you rec? Uh, exactly. There must be some fingerprints. There must be. Stop filling up. Yeah. Yeah, stop filling up that lens. Just uh, take <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah, Atul. So, Anji. Uh, this Preeti Mehta. Can you recommend what I need to do? Where are you? Preeti Mehta. Can you write enough? Scrolling through. Not bad. Raise yeah, your hand, Preeti. Preeti. Yeah, yeah, I can see you. Yeah, but just get the camera angle higher. It's below your chin right now. Okay. This. Yes. Yeah. No, no, it's higher and then looking down a bit. You know what I mean? So yeah. So I mean, when you take a picture, it would never be from underneath, right? So we tend Atul, to get careless about this. Not that it matters. I'm just appealing to everybody's vanity over here. <laughs> Atul, me. Oh yeah, Dushan. Atul. Yeah, Atul. Atul, is this better, Atul? Ah, Dushan, better when you took it higher now. Yeah. Atul, Adi, am I more so clear now? Okay, thank you. Adi, Crystal. You will end up doing a class yeah. right now. <laughs> Let's do an in camera. Let's do an in camera. I think people need to go have lunch now. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Lots of love. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. 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 Thank you.